All right, so let's go and do a quick review of expanding logarithmic expressions. I would say probably one of the biggest mistakes students make in expanding is one, not following the reverse order of operations, and two, forgetting what the properties of logarithms are that help us understand how to expand logarithmic expressions. Now, a lot of times that comes into they just have it written down incorrectly or they have it written in one form and they don't like they keep on confusing how to rewrite it in the other form. So what I like to do when I'm teaching expanding and condensing logarithmic expressions is to rewrite the rules in the way that you are trying to achieve. So if we're going to go and expand, let's make sure we understand the properties of logarithms in that form. Now again, one quick thing before I get into that, our goal when we're expanding a logarithmic expression is to rewrite our expression where we have a logarithm with a base and one single argument. So let's go and take a look here. If I have the log base b of m times n, notice my argument now has a product. I don't want to have a product inside my argument. I want to have a single argument. So this is what we're gonna be use, this is what we call the product rule for expanding logarithms. If I have a logarithm of base b and I have a product inside that argument, I can rewrite that as two logarithms with log base b plus log base b of n. So I can rewrite that as the sum of two logarithms. Now, a common mistake that students will do is they see product and they say, oh, that means it's log base b times of m times log base b times n. No, no, notice I said don't do that, okay? The other thing, it also works for what we call the quotient rule. If I have the quotient of two arguments or of two expressions inside the argument of my logarithm, rather than rewriting that as the id sum, I can now expand that out to two different logarithms with the same base as my original logarithm, but it's now going to be the difference of these two logarithms. And again, it's really, really important for you to recognize that my numerator is always gonna come first and I'm gonna be subtracting the argument from my denominator. Now, the last one is if you have a logarithm, which we call the power rule of m raised to the p, and this one's really, really helpful, especially when we get into solving or even evaluating logarithms, is that they have the power of an argument inside of a logarithm, I can rewrite that as the product times this logarithm with my base b and m. But I want you to guys to see something because it's really, really important when you're expanding. I think a lot of times students understand condensing. We're trying to go from multiple logarithms down to one. But when we're trying to do expanding, what we're trying to look for is we're trying to expand out our logarithmic expression. So all we have in each one of our logarithms is a base and an argument. We don't want multiplication, we don't want division, and we don't want powers, okay? So that is our purpose of condensing. But I would be a fool to say like, just remember these rules and go ahead and do your work. You're gonna understand it. I think the best way to understand this is to go through an example. So that's what I wanna do next. But there is one other thing to also remember to follow that I'm gonna talk about is when you are expanding and you're using these rules of logarithms to make sure you follow your reverse order of operations. All right, and one thing actually I meant to say, not only do you wanna follow your reverse order of operations, but please, for the love of mathematics, make sure you guys are also including parentheses. That is actually very, very important. Reverse order of operations kind of like make some sense and like you might just, it's kind of a lot of times on autopilot, but the using parentheses is critically important and you'll see exactly how I'm going to apply them in a problem like this. So what I mean by the reverse order of operations is I basically, I want to kind of work from the outside in, okay? That's what we're trying to apply here. So you notice that on the farthest outside here, I have my power, two. So I wanna rewrite that, I wanna take that down to the front. So I'll have this written as a two, and again, I'm gonna insert here my parentheses. ln of x to the fourth, square root of x squared plus three, divided by y to the fourth root of z cubed. Whew, this has a lot, okay? I don't know why I'm using brackets twice. We'll use a parentheses for that argument from on there. Okay, so two is gonna be multiplied by this whole expression here. Now, what you guys can see is I have a product in my numerator, a product in my denominator, and then a quotient between the numerator and the denominator. So I think the easiest thing to do, as long as you're following parentheses, is to break up the quotient first, okay? So remember, if we, to break up the quotient, I can rewrite this as a difference of the two of two logarithms. Okay, and I just inserted the multiplication sign just so you guys can now see. It's like, okay, yeah, I see I see those are going to be multiplied by each other. Now, again, here's something where I think it's really, really important to make sure that you're utilizing your parentheses. 
when you do it, if you do it like this, you have to make sure you are putting parentheses around this. Because now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to now apply the product property to expand each of these further logarithms, but I gotta make sure that I have parentheses around this. Because if you don't have parentheses around this, then you're only subtracting this ln of y, and that's only gonna be dividing by that one term. So this is where, remember I talked about inserting the parentheses, is gonna be so critically important. So now I can use this product property to rewrite these as two separate logarithms inside of each of these. Whew, okay. I don't know why I actually had a third parenthesis on there. Sorry about that. All right, so now a couple things we can go ahead and do. We recognize here the powers. Now I don't like having the radicals in this case. I'm actually going to rewrite these as rational powers. So this one was going to be the one half. So I'm going to use a lower parentheses here and rewrite that as one half. Because again, remember the whole argument was the square root of x squared plus three. So I got to put the whole thing in parentheses over here. And then this was raised to the one fourth power. Okay. Now one fourth times three is actually going to be a three fourths, but I'll go ahead and represent that in the next line. Now, another thing I can do is I can apply distributive property here. I can multiply this negative times ln of y and the negative times this ln. So therefore I can distribute that. And then now that I have all these powers up here to do my final power rule of expansion, I can take each and every one of power that I have and rewrite it in front. So now my final answer is gonna look something like this. And there you go. So you can see, ladies and gentlemen, we worked from everywhere taking one single logarithm. And now what I want you to see is I have a logarithm with no multiplication, no division. You can see here my log or my argument is going to be an expression, but that's perfectly fine. Every single one of my logarithms has just a argument or an expression, no multiplication or division. I took all my powers, I rewrote them. So therefore now this is fundamentally expanded. And notice my use of parentheses helped me preserve the correct signs. It's a good review and I hope it helps you out. But now I think it's time to go through a quick little review of solving our exponential equations.